Hey, and welcome to your next movement video. So I've been asked a lot recently about the toe separators which one of my students kindly made because I couldn't find the foam ones in New Zealand which I'd had in the UK. And the idea is that when you separate the toes you have more space and less compressive contact with the ground which means there's this thing called the ground reaction force, which is like that. That's going to be absorbed into your feet and less likely to go up through the knees and the hips and the lower back and the neck. Let me grab Ryan. I should have grabbed him already. Please excuse that his jaw is off. Anyway, you can only see the pelvis on the video. So look at all of these bones here. There's 30, 33 joints in the foot <clears throat> and heaps of bones. So we want all of those to move. If your foot is in a shoe that is squashing your toes, they can't move. It acts like one or two joints rather than lots of pivots. So when you put these between the toes and you wrap them around, you're spreading the feet. So when we do the movement class, I get them to put these in sometimes, my students. So when they're moving, they're already spreading from below and then that changes the force going all the way up. Thank you, Brian. It also feels really good afterwards. So these are just braids, actually, of old t-shirt material. I've also been asked a lot why we would even bother do that. So I've got three lots of shoes here. I've actually thrown out all of my narrow shoes. So all of mine are quite wide. I wear my Crocs just on my way to swimming or in the garden because my feet will fit into them. So look at this. My feet, I'll have to show you a little bit closer. If I put my foot on top, there's room. If I put my foot on top of these, there's room. If you put your foot on the ground and then put your shoe on top of it and you can still see your toes spreading out on the outside, then your shoe is too tight. So you can also get a piece of paper and draw around your foot, then put your shoe on top with your toes spread. Very interesting exercise. And the other thing to think about, what flexibility do you have in your shoe? So if your shoe can only do that there, that's the only part that can move in your foot. My Crocs bend more, but my Vibrams, these are my fancy Mungify City Vibrams, I can roll them up completely, which means my whole foot is flexible and can bend. You'd be surprised, and these are quite bendy, but how little your shoes can bend. So when we've been doing the spirals recently in class, we've been talking about spiraling the inner thigh inwards and the shins coming together. What that does is activate the fascia, the covering of the muscles, like the skin of the sausage. It activates the fascia to pull the tension up out of the feet, pull the tension up, 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 up. So when you walk, you have less force through the whole body. I hope that helps. Go grab your shoes, do some drawing, get the crayons out, do some drawing like you did when you were a kid and check out how much room you're really giving your feet on a day-to-day -day basis. Let me know. Bye.